What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. As you can see, we got ourselves our new couch just as I promised. So let's jump into an episode recap. This is season eight, Teen Mom 2, season eight, episode 20. And the episode starts off with Brianna texting Kale as Kale is ranting to her friend about Javi and Brianna's like po potential relationship. Brianna tells her that she and Javi are just friends and that she doesn't want anything to be uncomfortable at the upcoming reunion. Kale says it's weird that someone she works with is dating her ex husband and that she doesn't think Brianna is a good person and I wonder how it goes from oh you're dating my ex to you're a terrible person I just feel like you're a terrible person considering the fact that Kale's done a lot more um to prove that she's a terrible person than Brianna but I digress it was also funny to see how judgmental Kale was because immediately after her scene was Brianna and her sister Brittany talking about the whole entire situation and being like you know what I don't know Kale enough to know like what type of person she is or how she'll react to this type of stuff it was just so funny to see how level had they were about the situation as opposed to Kale. And Brittany also dropped the dime on Javi, claiming that Javi has been trying to get with Brianna ever since she was pregnant, which was like, all right, Poppy, if you're into that kind of thing, like he seems to be really into like claiming other men's kids. Like he's got no problem with it. I think it's great to step up you know, and be a great step parent for people's kids. But I have to say it is a little bit odd to me that a person is just consistently seeking people um, where he can insert himself as father figures to their children. That's a little, you know, especially at this age, it's a little interesting is all I'm gonna say there. Meanwhile on the swamp, Janelle is preparing for the reunion and she lets us know that Kai's is gonna be arriving with Nathan and his mom, Doris. And then David awkwardly like tries to make a joke in reference to the time that Janelle threw a mason jar at someone at Jessica and got away with it. He goes, oh, well, I'm sure everything's gonna be all right as long as you don't uh, throw like a jar of water at her. Okay. They talk about how awkward it is co-parenting with Doris after she filed papers. And of course, David says that Doris shouldn't be the mediator and Janelle falls for it, hook, line, and sinker. Literally everybody that Janelle interacts with and relies on says that David is a bad guy. And Janelle's reaction to that, instead of thinking about the safety of her children and the validity of all of these things, is to call everybody else liars and listen to this fool as he um, manipulates her into cutting all of them off so that he can get away with allegedly abusing her children. Like, it is absolutely astounding the how easy Janelle makes it for people to prey on her like astounding the conversation then of course turns into how Janelle should never speak to her mom Barbara again because you know it apparently it always turns into an argument and uh they also mentioned how like it was weird and malicious that Barbara is quote-unquote best friends with Doris all of a sudden I don't think it's weird at all in fact I think it is amazing and what should be happening within this family like all these kids are half siblings so why shouldn't all of the co-parents be you know on friendly terms with each other to help the kids like grow up together as much as possible especially considering the fact that Janelle is only going to be adding more kids and more dads to the mix as time goes on to wrap up the scene Janelle says she's only looking forward to hanging out with Brianna at the reunion and calls Kale a person with a bad attitude and says that everyone except Brianna is two-faced Chelsea gets like a really quick scene this episode like a bunch of her stuff was just in and out like they get to the hotel room and and Cole just gets on the bed and he goes, I want to find somebody who wants to find me. And that like baby voice, I was like, that's what you people are into. That's what you people are into, okay? But I'm just gonna move right on. Uh, Poppy um, gets into Brianna's room as she's feeding her baby, Stella. And he talks about how they need to spend more time together, you know, and he offers up the fact that he's always free on weekends to go down there. She can come up there as well. And um, Brianna just assures him like, hey, I don't know what we're doing, but whatever it is, we need to take it slow. Like there's no need to rush into anything and I don't wanna cause any problems. And speaking of problems, Kale is in the hair and makeup chair when Brianna walks in to say hello and Kale just flat out ignores her despite the peace offering text message that Brianna had sent to her earlier. Petty Betty indeed. She then takes her little Brazilian butt lift over to Larry to bitch at him for not having her own separate room for Lux. She goes, I want my own separate room for Lux. I was promised one. Where's he going to go? He's not vaccinated. I don't want him around Javi and Brianna. What does him not being vaccinated have to do with Javi and Brianna? Like, what are you talking about? And then second of all, you already put this child on a plane unvaccinated, so I'm pretty sure he's gonna be fine around like a couple dozen people as opposed to the hundreds of people he was already exposed to in a contained, sealed environment, dum-dum. And third of all, this is the same broad who's been online um, preaching about 
not vaccinating children. So what is it? Like you don't want other people to vaccinate their children, but your children need to be vaccinated. Were you lying this whole time? What do you mean he's not vaccinated yet? You're part of that anti-vax like thumping crew. So what was going on there? I just hate how this show has all of these like losers thinking that they're Beyonce or something making demands. Like really you are pushing 30 and there's nothing legitimate on your resume but a show called Teen Mom. Let that sink in boo boo. Now how hot is Leah this episode? Oh my god her body is banging twins and another baby all with no surgery. She looked amazing. I just can't. And how hilarious is it that Brianna was acting so hard to like Javi and her family the last episode talking about um um, Leah kind of backstabbing her by telling Kale, but like in front of Leah, she didn't even like say a peep. Classic, classic Brianna. She then heads on out uh, in between segments to sit down and talk with Janelle, and they talk about the clickiness of the show. I can see why the cast doesn't speak to trashy Janelle, but I do feel that it's very mean girl and clickish that they don't speak to Brianna just because of Kale being like pressed about Javi's relationship. And this whole coworker thing just doesn't fly with me. You're not technically coworkers, you just shoot a show together and you see each other what five six seven eight nine days out of a year really girl really you're calling that a co-worker i've got some news for you once you enter the fucking working world so the ogs and javi arrive for the new year's special and um brianna tells javi about the drama and he starts flirting with her immediately kale then bulldozes her ass on through their conversation they're talking she's just like and she starts like getting her stuff ready and then Javi, um, not realizing that, tries to go into the change room. She goes, Javi, I'm going in that room. And so Javi is like, oh, all right, how long are you gonna be? I'm gonna be a while. All right, let me get back to my woman. That's got you so pressed then. Like that girl is so miserable. Any man who impregnates her or dates her needs to take an L immediately. They start shooting the special and then David says anyone who had a baby at 14 should have a shot. This guy is so embarrassing. And Janelle then starts complaining that they're taking their shots away and giving them to her mom, Barbara, when Janelle's the teen mom. That woman is amazing, you guys. I'm the teen mom, give me all the shots, not my mom. What? Like, okay, don't you have kids to watch at the end of the night while you're trying to get like blackout drunk, girl? Meanwhile, David gets more and more obnoxious as the alcohol starts to taper off, like the flow of alcohol. They're like, okay, dude, you're already a little bit too lit. No more, we have things to finish here. Let's just work. He goes, I wanna go get some more beer at the beer store, blah, blah, blah. And so he leaves and as he's leaving, he starts stabbing balloons with people like in pretty close proximity to the balloons to where like, if you overextend, he could have like stabbed somebody y'all like i just want to say that like yikes he is so country bumpkin can't take your ass nowhere never been nowhere like embarrassing as much as this was reported on like before it aired i really wish they showed more reactions in real time especially because leah claimed that she and her friend were in fear for like their whole entire lives so why didn't we get to see all of that drama play out like really just a couple of balloon stabbings and he gets to walk away without any reactions being shown on TV, losing your touch. After all this goes down, Leah's talking to a producer about the situation and how she likes Brianna because she keeps it real. And coincidentally, I guess, Brianna walks on in and they talk about it. Leah reiterates her stance on her, like being a real person and all of that. And Bri's like, you know what? You did what you have to do. Don't do things to please other people. Just stand in your ground. But when you are gonna tell people things, make sure you tell them the truth because Kale thought I was sharing a one room with her ex-husband and all of the kids, which was not true. And Leah's like, I am not responsible for the way that she interpreted it because I told her exactly what you told me. And if you didn't want any of these things to be said, you should not have said a single thing to me in the first place, should have kept your mouth shut. By the way, I think they were both quite drunk from um, the special. Um, so in response to this, Brianna was like, all right, fine then. And she just abruptly leaves. And for some reason that sends Leah into a crying spell, like Leah, Really, what did Brianna do to you that you're gonna shed these like tears over? I don't get it. Like, I wanna say it's just the alcohol, but like to be like, oh, Brianna was aggressive to her, blah, 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 is absolute bullshit. A grown ass woman should not be crying just because someone walked away from the end of a conversation with them. Now it's time to shoot the actual reunion now and um, everyone's backstage and Brianna tries to reach out again to Kale by telling her, you know, while she was complaining about missing out on last night because of baby Lux, that it wasn't that much fun. And Kale, of course, is her typical, like angry, bitter, like, 
petty betty mode okay at this point brianna's had enough of kale's attitude she's like kale why are you such like a sourpuss what's wrong with you kale's like well i feel like you and javi are not being honest about the situation between you guys okay i wish you would tell me what's going on because i know you guys are together brianna's like listen kale the reason we don't tell you what's going on between us is because we don't know I can't tell you we're in a relationship because we're not in a relationship. I can't tell you we're not gonna be in a relationship because that's not true either. So all I told you is the truth at the moment. We are just friends, which I thought was a pretty valid explanation for why she doesn't tell her too, too much. Though she could say that they're kind of seeing each other because it sounds like they are at that point. And that, of course, still wasn't good enough for Petty Betty. She was like, I still feel like you're being disingenuous. You know what? That is too big a word. I still don't think you're being real about it. Blah, 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 blah. And so Brandon's like, you know what? whatever like i already said all i could say kale responds i don't care what you guys do oh that explains all of the meltdowns and conversations you've had about this <laughs> brie then tells her that she's being an asshole and kale's like how am i being an asshole how am i being an asshole it is absolutely astounding that this woman cannot see how she can be perceived as an asshole interest in response to this entire situation especially in light of that temper tantrum she threw the other day about oh i don't want to talk to you i'm gonna pretend you're not even here i don't want to be around these people and then just now as well when brianna was trying to like make light with her and she ignored her and just went into straight up bitch mode like really kale you don't see yourself as an asshole i wonder what an asshole looks like to you then the two of them then go back and forth some more and things really take a turn when for literally no reason at all kale was like fine Bray, just be ratchet why the hell did Kale call Brianna Ratchet? In my opinion, that is racially coded language. And I find a lot of people in the Teen Mom universe do that to Brianna, her family, and Chris as well. And it's just, it's really gross. And it just, it, it didn't sit right with me. And thank God Bri Bri had her mom and her sister there to have her back because her sister was like, why are you calling her Ratchet? What she do that's so Ratchet? Kale could not even explain. It's just so funny to me that a white girl who's obsessed with being like black or Latina or whatever it is, you know, on a certain day says this type of shit, especially when her kids are half Latino and half black. Brianna's mom then tries to tell Kale like, dude, you were being pretty rude. I felt like she was quite calm in it. And Kale thought she can get buck and gully with Bree's mom and Bree shut that shit down. But you know, my problem with all of this is that Bree, when she was talking to Kale one-on-one, -on -one, even though her family already told her like, stand your ground, make sure she doesn't mess with you. She was pretty meek and mild. But as soon as like her mom came in, it was, don't talk to my mom like that. She like, she hyped up. And then when her sister stuck up for her rightfully so, when Kale called her ratchet for no fucking reason, I swear to God, if a bitch ever called me ratchet, just out of nowhere, ooh, she would get it. Um, then like she she hypes up again like Brie can never stand in her own battles but she's always the one to talk the loudest about like how she doesn't take shit how she'll like fuck you up like Brie grow some balls or stop threatening people like at this point you just look like a keyboard gangster and it's kind of embarrassing and so um Brit was like you know what she's not the ratchet one I'm the ratchet one try me bitch try me bitch because you don't want it with me and I was living for it it is so nice to see people stand up to Kale put her in her place like all of that because not enough people do it in her world which is why she's turned into this like nasty nasty like repulsive person that's so freaking difficult to watch okay so that wraps up this episode of teen mom 2 how boring is the season gonna be if we're getting like three episodes about like one freaking reunion special like i'm a little bit nervous to see what this season has in store but whatever let's let's hope that um next week's episode lives up to the hype because we're going to be talking about all of the drama that surrounded janelle um nathan kaiser and our mom barbara as well you guys what did you think about this episode of teen mom 2 i'm so excited to hear what you have to say about everything so please make sure to leave all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below and as usual we'll chat you can also like this video subscribe for more feel free to share it with your friends as well and follow me across social media where i absolutely Absolutely love chatting with you. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.